Hi, I'm Tim Belcher and welcome to my shop. I've done a lot of resin inlaid signs in the past and one of my favorite ways to color signs is resin. And for a long time I've had this idea that you could effectively use a CNC machine to screen print. You could carve color, the next day carve color, the next day carve color. And as long as your sign didn't move and you kept your registrations, you could fairly easily produce a multicolored resin inlaid sign. A few weeks ago we made plaques for my son's sixth grade teachers as presents and I noticed then that the resin was changing color based on the depth of the cut it was filling and I wondered if we could control the contouring underneath a resin pour if we couldn't create shading. And that's what this project is all about. Underneath this four color resin inlay is a 3D contour. I've only sanded this to 180 grit, and it, right now it's very cloudy. If you want to see this finished, you're going to have to stick around uh, till later in the video. You've seen the thumbnail though, so you probably know more than I do. I hope when I clear coat this, that contouring will come through those colors in the form of some shading. So again, this is using a CNC to screen print a four color 3D resin inlay. This is how I made it. rewind you all the way back to a little computer work, not too much and not too deep. I essentially started by finding a four colored shaded image and this Iron Man picture sort of fit that bill. And what I'm doing is using an image editor to group and select each of the four colors onto a different layer. The light red, the dark red, the gold, and the white. And here you'll see I have my layers now, and I can select each one individually to recomposite that entire image. And then I'm going to change it to grayscale. We need grayscale images for this process to work. And now that I have four grayscale images, I'm going to pull each one into a spire and convert that grayscale image into a model. Now I realize a spire is expensive, but there are open source alternatives. And if you know of them, please drop a comment. I'm going to edit each one of these models slightly, adjust it, the depth, and then put the model 0.05 inches below the surface. I'm going to repeat that process for each of the colors and create a roughing pass and a finish pass for each with the text that's 9. And what I've done here is simply color the cuts to give a rough idea of how this carving will look when it's finished and filled. And now we can get to some carving. I'm finding center on this inexpensive round pine blank from Lowe's. I like using these as test pieces. I know I'm going to be working on this piece for several days, so I, I did a ref all home, set my X and Y to zero, and then found the center of that blank and recorded those positions. And that will let me refine the center if I ever lose it in case I have a power outage or somehow need to take this piece off. And for each of the colors, we're going to do the same process. We're going to do a roughing pass and then a finish pass. Each pass requires a bit change and I need to find my Z again after I change the bit each time. But what I'm left with is a contoured 3D image of that color. What I'm doing here is I'm marking the end of these mixing sticks with some pencil marks. And as I'm mixing, I can see how transparent that color is. And you'll see there that red and black, which I thought would make a dark red, ended up making a fairly ugly purple. So that got set aside and a new color was mixed. And this to me is one of the most enjoyable parts, filling in these carbs with resin. A little heat to pop the bubbles and we waited a day to see the results. So it's the next morning and there's a couple of problems. The good news is I'm seeing shading based on the contouring under the resin. That's what I wanted to see. The first problem would be that that shading is reversed of what it should be. What is light should be dark. What is dark should be light. I can fix that and I'll get to that in a minute. The second problem is I put too much color in the resin and it's not transparent enough to see any of the contouring. 
I'm not sure I can fix that. I'll try to take more time working that color into the resin to provide that transparency, but it may be difficult on the dark colors. It may be easier on the, on the lighter ones. I went ahead and took it out of the clamps because I'm gonna I know I'm gonna have to restart. Uh, you can see the shading is working, and to reverse that, I'm gonna take those four grayscale images and invert them prior to bringing them into a spire. That will completely flip the contouring and what is light will be dark, what is dark will be light. I'll take a little bit more time on the resin and see if I can get this darker color a little bit more transparent. I'm not sure it's gonna happen. The cynic in me would say, looking at this first test, that this may turn out something like a sixth grade paint by number or watercolor project, I have no idea. The optimist says, hey, maybe it'll look like some kind of stained glass or some kind of abstract version of the image. It, it doesn't matter, this is all for fun. So I'm gonna go in and restart that project and I'll join you back when we get to this stage with the right contouring. While I'm doing that, let me take a few quick seconds and ask for some advice on an upcoming build. This is gonna be the next big build I do in the channel. This long, narrow box elder slab has some incredible reds, pinks, blues, grays, has some great crotch figures, some bark inclusions, some holes, just a fantastic live edge. This is gonna be a beautiful piece regardless of what I do with it. I have two main ideas. Jimmy Duresta recently did a tasting table for Guinness Brewery out of a live walnut slab, live edge walnut slab with a maple inlay. When I saw that video, I thought this slab would be perfect for a long tasting table. That's my first idea. If I were to do that, I would probably inlay a chessboard and a backgammon board and build some storage for the game pieces into the leg assembly. That's idea one. Idea two would be to recreate a project I did before I started my YouTube channel, but that I loved. A double waterfall live edge coffee table out of this beautiful ash slab. I always regretted not filming that project. And I have another location for a coffee table like that that would fit perfectly with this slab. And again, I think it would be beautiful. If you have any comments or thoughts about those two ideas, please leave them in the comments below. If you have other ideas for this slab, certainly feel free to drop a comment. And if you want to see that build, it's coming soon, so subscribe to the channel. Now let's get back to the build. So I redid the dark red and all the tool passes for all colors to flip that contouring. And now you see here we're doing the light red. After each one of these carvings, there was a little bit of cleanup to do, but not much. And it was certainly easier mixing the right color if I only used one of those powders. And the next day it was on to the gold. I didn't have any gold pigment, but I did have some copper and some yellow. I figured some combination of those two would get me close enough. Overall, I think the gold was probably a tad too dark. A lot of complexities in this process, both in shaping the contours, as well as color and transparency selection. But overall, it came out fine and I'm happy with it and it was about this time that the project started to look like something and four days four colors the last one white going on now and the not so fun part of the job And in truth, this wasn't that bad, maybe an hour's worth of work, both on the belt sander as well as the orbital. After I did my first carving of dark red, I actually put pencil marks all around the image to help me figure out when to stop sanding with rough grit sandpaper. 
and as soon as those pencil marks were gone, I could start working up the grits to 180. And now the first of several coats of semi-gloss lacquer. And this was really the first time I could see the transparency, the contouring, and the shading all come through. There are a lot of ways to make a more photorealistic, multi-colored resin version of this image. But that really wasn't the point of this project. This project was testing that 3D contouring under your resin pour. And for that, I think it was very much a success. And while this may not be a museum piece, I do think it presents some interesting options for CNC and resin art. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you like this, please hit that subscribe button, comment, and like the video. Thank you. See you next time.